It is my privilege to present the following program that was inspired by the way American businesses and organizations have responded to the events of September 11th. It's part of a special series produced by Heartbeat of America called Keeping America Strong. Each program spotlights a business or organization that is helping to do exactly that, keep America strong. Having served in the United States Navy for many years, I fully appreciate the important role small and middle-sized businesses play in the very fabric of our country. And I salute the professionals who lead these companies and thus keep America strong. They are the very backbone of our free enterprise system. And today on this program, you will meet the individuals behind one such organization. I'll be back later in the program to introduce the Keeping America Strong Award. And now, let's learn more about the organization we are honoring today. Today, the eyes and ears of the 21st century are focused on new developments, new technologies, new emerging companies. We're on the scene to bring it to you as it happens. We anchor from our new studios in Los Angeles and then go out all over America to get to the heart of the story. I'm Bert Tenzer. I'm Bella Shaw. I'm Doug Llewellyn. I'm William Shatner, and this is Heartbeat of America. Our show focuses on corporate America, its stories, its drama, its breakthroughs. We'll be going out today to report on an organization that is impacting our lives and shaping our future, an organization that truly is the heartbeat of America. In the 20th century, a group of future Americans led by William Shatner ventured out into the universe. The challenge? To take the American spirit and courage to the final frontier of man, outer space. It was an exciting time on television, but it was only a fantasy. Meanwhile, here on the planet Earth in the 21st century, a new challenge has emerged. And this one's for real. It's the challenge to unite America and to keep our economy and our country moving forward. This has inspired Heartbeat of America to launch a special series entitled Keeping America Strong. In the 20th century, William Shatner took us off on a voyage into the universe to experience what life is like on other planets. But now, here in the 21st century, he is back here on our own planet to experience with us new technologies and new ways of life that are taking place right here on Earth. It's all part of a new series that we call Keeping America Strong. And as you know, part of Keeping America Strong is keeping corporate America strong and moving forward, especially in the economic downturn of today. Our guest does exactly that by providing businesses of all types and sizes with training and consulting that focus on the four fundamentals of business, sales, management, customer service, and quality improvement. His name is Richard Tyler, and we're awfully proud to have him with us today. By the way, he's written a book called Smart Business Strategies, which has been hailed as one of the best books ever written for small business marketing. Mr. Tyler, nice to have you here. Welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I know one of the key things that you do is you, you train and you present seminars for companies and small businesses. Right. Give me a little bit of idea of what goes on at these training seminars. Well, we offer a multitude of different types of training programs and education programs, but they're all wrapped around a commitment to excellence, a philosophy that in order to be the very best at what you do, you have to make gradual, constant improvements. The world is going to be changing. It always changes. That's the thing that, uh, that never ends up changing, is that change is always going to be part of it. So by being committed to excellence and making improvements in everything you do daily, you keep your business strong. It's been my philosophy that I've learned over the years that the difference between average and good is just a little bit. And the difference between good and excellent is just a little bit more. We help companies and individuals get that just a little bit more. And you do it through these seminars? We do it through the seminars, absolutely. Is that all there is? No, we offer consulting services, we offer profile services, we assist companies in hiring, but the primary methods that we introduce our philosophies to companies through are through our education programs or seminars, through my keynote speaking and addressing large audiences and so forth, and our consulting services. It's interesting because uh, I was talking with you a little while ago, when my idea of a seminar mm -hmm. was where someone gets up and addresses a crowd of people for a couple of hours or maybe a day and then they go home that's the seminar mm -hmm. but that's not your kind of seminar is it no not really 
that's where it all begins. And there are programs out there that are very good programs that start with a three or four or two hour, and those are motivational programs. And there's nothing wrong with motivation. We all need motivation. We have to get excited. But motivation should be the energy and the emotion that is a catalyst to more action. Programs that are much longer. You can't possibly teach the philosophies of sales or leadership or management in three or four hours. Yeah. It's, it, it just doesn't work. Talk to me about your uh, consulting services. What, when a company brings you in to consult with them, why are they bringing you in and what do you do? Well, there's two reasons primarily why companies bring us in to consult. One is because they're not doing very well. Pretty obvious. Yeah, and they're looking to turn that around and they're not sure how to do that. Right. The second reason is they're doing very well and they want to get an outside expert opinion on how to continue to make that a replicatable system that they can build upon more and more and more. We see things from a different perspective than any company would. You know, we're not in that forest with them, so we can sit back and we can see ways that they can improve, ways that they can tweak their business, and ways that their customers get better benefits from the products and services that they offer. Well, so the, that's why they bring us in. The advantage is you also have worked with other companies that may have been their competitors uh, or other companies that do, do the same thing, and you know how they're doing it and why they're succeeding. Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, you're kind of like a spy almost. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we do is we look at the philosophies that work no matter what the industry is. Right. Whether it's a competitive company, we look at the principles that create success. And those are universal. You know, every company that we come into often thinks that their situation is very unique. It's something totally different that's never been had before. But the fact of the matter is, is there may be unique players, and it may be a unique position in time, but the problems have existed since the beginning of time. When you become, when you, when you serve as a consultant to a company, though, you really kind of come inside the company and, and almost become part of the team for an extended period of time. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. We really do become part of the team. I, Doug, you hit the nail right on the head there. Because when we come in and consult, it's not a one-day come in and take a look at what's happening. We go in and we become part of the corporate culture. We examine the company from top to bottom. Now, of course, it depends specifically on what the company is asking us to do. We may be advising them on a launch of a product. We may be advising them on the best way to structure their compensation plan. We may be advising them how to create leadership within their organization. We may be advising them on strategic uh, sales planning or strategic business development. Or we may be advising them on all of those all of things. Them. Yeah, right. And how long would a typical uh, consulting assignment last? Well, our consulting is often wrapped in with training, and training is often wrapped in with consulting. But what we do is long-term program development and long-term consulting. Because to, if you really want to get involved and inculcated into the corporate culture, you can't be there for a day. So most of our programs, in a minimum, are 12 months, and many of them go on for years. We have clients that have been with us 15 years, and we're there constantly assisting them in all of the things that they do. Well, if you're there that long, obviously they're realizing a benefit of your presence. Absolutely. You wouldn't be there. You would right. hope that that, that would be the case. Yeah. Not only that, let me one other thing. In addition to all of these, sir, you also have the products, the, the book, right? Uh -huh. Let's uh, let me hold up this book, by the way. For our, you may have you may recognize this. This has been on the market for uh, for a while. If you go into to bookstores, especially in the business sections. Uh, this is a book you would see very prominently displayed. Again, this has been hailed as one of the best books for, uh, for small businesses ever written uh, on marketing primarily. Is that right? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the book. What's it about? Well, you know, this is a small business marketing book, and normally that's not where I would have started. I would have started putting together a book on sales. But the first book that came out, why I drove to that one first, back in 96 was the first edition of this book, mm -hmm. uh, was because entrepreneurs were, were budding everywhere, small businesses were opening, and people needed assistance. When I first got into business many years ago, I looked at the types of books that were out there for marketing and promoting a business. And there are tons of them. There are tons of them, but right. most of them are written in technical jargon and they're, you know, a foot thick, and some of them are, are written by academic people who have not experienced those things. This is written in a straight forward, on the street style, exactly the way I learned it. And it's got practical applications in it. So in each and every chapter, an individual learns a lesson, they take a test or a quiz to see how, they, how well they learned that lesson within the book, and then they move on to the next piece. 
so it works for them right away. Simple things. It's been my experience that what happens with individuals, if it's too big or too technical, the entrepreneur who's excited, who's motivated, who wants to make things happen, well, they set it aside. They say, well, I'll get to that later on. So we specifically designed it in a way that would excite the entrepreneur, and they wouldn't want to put it down. And even though this book was published in 96, it's just as viable today as it was then? It's absolutely just as viable. As a matter of fact, we're coming out with the second edition of the second printing of the book, and it should be out, and it will be out in 2004. And in that, we're addressing something that we didn't address when this book came out, is the tremendous opportunities that exist in the Internet marketing end of the business, how to promote your business through the Internet, how to grow your business, how to make that another revenue channel for your business. And so that will be addressed in there. And, of course, we've created an audio version of the product as well. And the audio version is a kick. I mean, you'd love to listen to the audio it's version. Like, because it's like a radio program. Yeah, it's very drama. entertaining. Yeah, yeah. You know, I listen to so many books over the years, regular books when I was right. driving around when I first started out. Right. And audio books helped me get from one place to another place. So it, the time passed quickly. And then when I listened to most business books, although the content was superb, the delivery wasn't very exciting and it certainly wasn't entertaining. In this book, we made it entertaining. It's just exactly like a radio program that you sit and listen to. There are characters, there are things going on. The person can sit back and laugh at things while they're learning. I had a kick doing it. Fascinating. Very, very interesting. We have been watching the operations of an organization which is doing its part to keep America strong and we've been learning from its leaders about what they're doing to help move our country forward. This organization represents companies across our great nation that embody the spirit, dedication, know-how, and can-do attitude which has made America the great nation it is today. And now, let's present the Keeping America Strong Award. Now, it's my honor to present our Keeping America Strong Award to Richard Tyler, the President and CEO of Richard Tyler International of Houston, Texas, for the outstanding work he is doing to help keep America strong and keep keeping our industry and our corporations Moving forward. Thank you so much. This is so beautiful. On behalf of all of the people at Richard Tyler International and all the people who are our students and clients all over the world, we accept this very graciously. Richard, Thank you again. Best wishes. Congratulations for earning the Keeping America Strong Award, which honors innovators and leaders like you who are the heartbeat of America. Our thanks to retired Rear Admiral Kevin Delaney for taking part in the presentation of the Keeping America Strong Award, the award that salutes small to middle-sized organizations who are helping to move America forward. For more information about this company and the many services it offers, visit their websites. They have two, www.richardtyler.com and www.tylertraining.com. That's it for Heartbeat of America's special edition, Keeping America Strong. Now for a final word from William Shatner. Well, that's it for this edition of Heartbeat of America. I'm William Shatner. Thanks for watching.